Welcome back to Wood Engineering. I'm Jeff Orochko from Carleton University. And in this video, we're gonna talk about how to design nailed connections for withdrawal. And when I'm talking about withdrawal, I am talking about, I have a nailed connection, I have a nail going through, connects this piece of wood to another piece of wood, or connects a piece of steel to another piece of wood like this. And then I wanna figure out what is the strength of my nailed connection in withdrawal. So this piece of wood pulling out. So it could be something like this where I have something hanging and uh, there's some load on this piece of wood and as it gets loaded, it's gonna pull out. And you know, once it reaches that pull out load, it's basically gonna totally fail. Um, so we are not permitted to rely on withdrawal loads for any of the kind of normal loading conditions. So I can't like hang something from the ceiling um, using withdrawal, but I can use it for short term duration loads. So if there's something happening where I'm going to get some kind of uplift due to earthquake, um, you know, more like this, actually, I can't do this like this. If I have some uplift due to earthquake loads or wind loads, something is pushing laterally, which is causing an uplift. I can withdraw, I can uh, rely on withdrawal resistance for that. So let me draw out a couple of uh, those scenarios, what they might look like. Okay, so this is not something that would commonly happen, but if I had a nail that came down like this, this is not really a design that you would uh, see because usually we use a bolted connection for a hold down, but let's say that my load was so low that I could do it with nails. Um, then, um, you know, I could resist a lateral earthquake or wind um, like that for withdrawal. You know, these want to withdraw out of the bottom piece that they're nailed into. Again, not a realistic type of connection. Uh, here's one that maybe is uh, makes a bit more sense. So let's say I have some roof sheathing, something like this and uh, it is attached to some roof rafters or uh, joists or something like that. So here's a joist. And I have nailed this like this. Okay, then for wind uplift, okay, so I might have some wind uplift on here. I can rely on the withdrawal resistance of that nail to prevent the um, to prevent the sheathing from coming up off the roof. For example, on roofing. Okay, so there's a couple of examples. Um, the other limitation is that I cannot use withdrawal um, for end grain for any situation. So if I am nailing into the end grain of a piece of wood, so if I have a situation that looks like this and I am nailing through here, is a bit awkward. Say I am nailing whoop, through here into this end end grain. When we looked at shear, we decided we uh, talked about how we can actually use this to prevent these kind of loads. But I cannot use a connection like this to prevent against pulling this out in this direction. It's not permitted. Okay, you can imagine as poor as. Uh, you know, as poor as this shear situation is in my straws, uh, just imagine the, how easy it is to pull this out compared to um, having it in the side green and actually having to push those, um, um, push those, um, uh, deal with the friction caused by spreading the fibers apart in the middle of a beam. Okay. At the end grain, you know, all the fibers are basically exposed, so it's easy to uh, push them apart. Um, Okay, so I'm going to make a note on that. Okay, so side grain means basically I can put it this way. Or if I have a nail going into this side of a piece of wood. Okay, then these are okay. So if I have uplift force here, this is okay. If I have a sideways force here pulling on this nail, this is okay, as long as it's wind or earthquake, obviously. Okay, um, on the right here, though, um, we know how these uh, grain are, is longitudinal like this, right? 
So if I am putting a, a nail like this pointing upwards, and then I'm trying to resist this uplift force, this is not okay. I'm not permitted to do this under any circumstance. Okay, so if that was a shear wall and I'm trying to prevent the uplift of cords at the end of the shear wall, I'm not allowed to use an end nailed um, connection to do that, to prevent the, um, the, the cord from coming up off of the uh, bottom plate, not permitted. Okay, so now let's uh, just talk about how I actually do this calculation for withdrawal resistance. Okay, so in this equation, this is uh, load PR resistance for withdrawal W, PRW. We have a phi factor, so material reduction factor. We have a YW, which is basically a modified withdrawal resistance per millimeter of penetration. And um, LP, which is the length of penetration. And then NF is the number of fasteners that we have in the connection resisting the withdrawal. JA and JB are for toenailing and clinching which are similar to uh, what we looked at when we looked at lateral resistance of nailed connections, um, but the values are a bit different. So we're gonna look at those. Okay, basically the way that this works is the nail is embedded in the point side piece of wood, okay? And what is resisting the pull out of that nail is friction between the shaft of the nail and the piece of wood around it. Okay, so there's friction there. Now, how much friction there is depends on how long this embedment distance is. Okay, so if I only have a very short amount of nail embedded in that piece of wood, I have low friction, right? Because I have like a normal force. Uh, the normal force on the friction interface between the nail and the wood is dependent on how much wood there is, right? So the more wood I spread apart, the more normal force I have. Therefore, the more friction I have. Okay, so the longer that nail is embedded, the more friction force there is to resist the pullout. So that's why there is a LP parameter here, which is the length of penetration. And YW is basically given in uh, a withdrawal resistance per millimeter. Okay, so this capital YW is just like our other unit strengths. It's a small YW times a KSF KT. So there's no duration factor here. This is only applicable to short duration loads. Okay, so there's no need to have a KD factor here. Okay, so we have KSF, KD. And this here, small yw. Okay, is the withdrawal resistance per millimeter of nail penetration in the point side member. So where that nail is embedded. And there is a empirical equation for YW that looks like this. Okay, so this YW, small YW withdrawal resistance per millimeter is based on the diameter of the fastener and um, the mean relative density, uh, which we had before when we were talking about lateral resistance. So we get that from the tables in the appendix that we talked about previously. It is this table over here, which we've seen before. Um, so depending on what kind of wood my nail is embedded in, I have a different mean of and dry relative density to use in this equation. Um, my JX is uh, also similar to before, 0 0.9 for CLT and 1.0 otherwise. Okay, so this equation here characterizes basically what is the friction between the nail and the wood. Um, so it depends on how far apart I have to push the wood in order to put the nail in. Um, and it depends on the density because that affects the stiffness of the wood, how hard it is to push the fibers apart. Um, so likewise, like when I'm pushing fibers apart, it's that force that I use to push the fibers apart that is the same as the normal force on the friction interface that causes the friction. Okay, so then we have LP. Okay, so if I were to draw what LP looked like, here is a situation where I have a member on top, something or sheathing or something, and then I have my nail 
which goes through the first piece and holds that first piece, the top piece, to the bottom piece. So it's embedded in the bottom piece here. And let's say I have some uplift force that I'm designing this for withdrawal. Then um, my length of penetration is this distance here, the length of penetration into the point side member. And obviously in this case, this here is the point side member. Okay, so for the other parameters, we have NF, JA, and JB. So NF is just the number of fasteners. So obviously the strength scales with how many fasteners there are. JE, JA, sorry, is a toenailing, um, toenailing uh, factor. Okay, 0.67 this time, which is smaller than it was for the lateral resistance equations. And JB is for nail clinching, which um, I am sure that you can understand this would certainly help for pull out. If I clinch the end of the nail, it's going to be harder to pull that nail out. Okay, so that's it. Once I have NF, JA, JB, I find my length of penetration and I calculate my um, unit resistance, basically my unit withdrawal resistance, YW. I modify that by KSFKT to account for service condition and treatment factors. And um, I have my phi factor. The phi factor I forgot to put in here, which is 0 0.6 for withdrawal. And then I multiply all those together and I get my PRW. And I'm done. Okay, so following up with these videos, we're going to do some examples of lateral shear resistance um, so that we can see how to design nailed connections.